Uh, I'm Chris Rizzo, and I am a support uh, and operations uh, sort of ish lead for a measurement lab. I may have corresponded with many of you. Um, and hey, uh, I'm Nick Team. I'm a data journalist intern here over the summer. So Nick and I have been working together this summer uh, on a lot of data support requests, uh, which many of you have sent to us in the past. And so we're going to do a breakout session on working with MLab data. Uh, we got another slide, yeah. don't we? There you go. So what can we make with MLab? This is an example. We're just really not going to go any more than that. But look, we made some maps. Actually, Nick made the maps. <laughs> and they're really awesome. And we'd love to build some capacity in your organizations to work with the MLab data and do amazing things with it. So that's what our session is about. You should come because you might want to learn to use MLab data with basic R functions, Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, get started. Uh, if you're not familiar with what those things are, that's fine. We're going to start from the basics and go on up to all the possibilities, and uh, and you'll have some ideas. Anything more you want to know? Please come listen to us talk. Yes. And they'll be back here in the corner. So, cool. Right. <laughs> um, Simone, I think you're next. Yeah. So, hello, I'm Simone. I'm an intern here at MLab, and I also work for Uni. Um, Uni is a, a tool. How do I go to the next slide? Press a little arrow. So, other way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have serious issues with hardware. Anything that is hardware, I can't really deal with it. I'll, I'll, I'll do this. You thank you. Me. Thank you. So, okay, Uni is this project uh, under the Tor project umbrella to measure internet censorship, and uh, uh, like in these two slides, it's just put the basics. So one of the things that we do, we do many things, uh, is uh, try to, in a way, mock what a real web browser will do for a created test list that depends on the country, and try to see if what we got is uh, accessible, if not, why, and if it's accessible, if it makes sense what we got or not. And based on that, can, uh, can yeah. you go to, we produce research reports, and uh, this is, for example, a very recent research report from Egypt uh, that is quite comprehensive and explains uh, uh, many findings that we, we, we discovered. Uh, among the many things that we discovered, a very funny one is that uh, there, we discovered that, like, that the censorship mechanism in Egypt was serving uh, ads or crypto mining uh, pages uh, for domains that were blocked by the state. So this is part of uh, um, the stuff that we do. So this is like in very few sentences what UNI does. Uh, what I will, I hope we can do in the session is, uh, well, I can provide you more background and more information on Uni. Uni is not only a software project. There is a lot of human components involved and policy. I can talk about that. And then I can also talk about another aspect, uh, depending on who shows up and what are your interests. Uh, that is uh, the intersection between what Uni does and what MLab does. And this is part of the reason why I have bought hats. Uh, and uh, this is basically the fact that if you perform a lot of longitudinal performance measurements from a place, then you're able to see uh, when there is throttling because you will observe throttling on the performance measurements. And there are cases like uh, Colin, showed, uh, Colin Anderson that used to work at AMLAB showed in the past that uh, you can really see a country throttling all the people. And then uh, um, another possibility is that when there is a country that shuts down an area of the internet, you can possibly observe that because like all the clients that were supposed to show up uh, like on the average, they disappear. So that's my session. Hi, everyone. Thanks for sticking around after lunch. Uh, my name is Maiko Nakagaki, and I'm with Alliance for Affordable Internet, a for ai as we like to call ourselves. Um, so the right to go online, to connect with friends, to purchase goods and products, to uh, civically engage with your government, these are uh, privileges, as you know, that we often take for granted because over 50% of the global population still do not have access to the internet. In fact, our own research shows that at the current rate of growth, uh, we will not achieve universal access until the year 2042, which is two decades beyond the SDG target year of uh, 2020. And the billions of individuals who are left online still are uh, women and the poor from uh, developing countries who are experiencing inequalities and uh, discriminations in the offline space, which is reflected online and if not magnified. 
And the number one reason for um, access inability is affordability and the cost. And for that reason, uh, A4AI came to being around 2014. We are the world's broadest tech sector alliance, and we have over 80 private companies, governments, and civil society from both developed and developing countries working together to transform policy and regulatory framework to drive down the costs. Um, we believe that driving uh, policy reform is the best way to advance technological um, <clears throat> breakthroughs around the world. And we define affordability through our one for two target, which means that for one gigabyte, it should not cost more than 2% of, of national monthly income of a given nation. Can you go to the next slide? Great. So as of now, we're working in eight countries, as you can see, and we have helped uh, develop multi-stakeholder coalitions in each of these countries where we address uh, local problems with local solutions. And in order to do that, we also have a robust uh, research team that produces evidence-based evidence -based, uh, policy research around uh, how policy frameworks are uh, in place or how they're not implemented. And we produce our annual affordability report, which you may have heard of. We also produce case studies on infrastructure sharing or taxation, broadband strategy plans. And we also look at thematic briefings, um, looking at USF reports and so forth. We actually have a report coming out with MLAB on quality of services, looking at download and upload speeds on mobile phones in low and middle income countries. That's coming out this fall, so TBD. So for my breakout session, I would love to speak, uh, have a discussion with you about how to address this inequality that we are experiencing offline in the online space. What can we uh, do to improve internet affordability? Uh, how can we uh, close the gap on the digital divide that many women are experiencing, which also includes cultural norms, and also about how uh, we can collectively produce research that can help policymakers address these issues? Thank you. OK. so. Uh, Nick and Chris workshop of getting started with MLAB data back there. Simone will be over here, and Mako will be in the conference room right across the hall. And go. <laughs>